Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 4 of D&D 20. We last left our adventures in the Vault of Ashes. Siler reaches for the orb and is assaulted with a vision. In his vision, he sees himself gathering an army of not only men, but of elves as well. He is leading them on a glorious conquest to destroy the world. But as soon as the vision starts, it ends. Confused, Sai backs away, trying to compose his thoughts. Mokot, looking at this, is confused, and he too reaches for the orb, thinking they'd be done and make their leave as soon as they get it. But he touches it as well, and is assaulted by a vision. In his vision, he fights a god of thunder, and in the midst of this battle, Mokot slays this god, taking his place as that deity, and with a god's weapon, he splits the world in half. This too only lasts a second. The rest of the party starts noticing that one of the statues in the corner is gone. And just as that realization sets in, a figure appears at the bottom of the stairs. The group is paralyzed, all except for Tyleaf. It's a lich, and he introduces himself by the name of Zetaxis. He shares that he was trapped here with the Eye of Ashes for over 1200 years as its guardian. Tyleaf, being the only one able to speak at this point, asks if we are able to take it, to which the taxis replies, I will not stop you. You have set me free to fulfill the destiny that I has shown me. He claims that the visions the orb gives are prophetic in nature. Before taking his leave, he asked one thing. He asked, what of the Eternal Empire? With some knowledge and a few good roles. We are able to discern that the Eternal Empire was something of a fairy tale, an empire that stretched across the whole continent, covering the entire Tyleaf Leaf answers, saying that it is no more. All the ruins left behind from that kingdom. The taxi smiles and glides to the door. Tyleaf calls out, You won't stop us then. I will not, the taxi replies, but I cannot say the same for my pet. As the doors close behind him, the f uh, floating green flames appear around the edge of the room. Siler quickly takes his packs and scoops up the orb in it as he and Lorvir make a dash to the door. Lorvir reaches the bottom of the stairs first as she had jumped down. But just then, a bone wavering leaps out of the water blocking their path. So as a side note, this fight, oh man, holy shit, was hard. It was ridiculously hard. Uh, we were, I was keeping track of damage and we were, I think, at like 200, which is ridiculous. We were level 4, 3, 4? Uh, we later found out that it was resistant to piercing and slashing attacks, which... Turns out, the only person doing true damage was Ty Leaf and his wolf with bludgeoning attacks because it's bone. Uh, yeah, so that happened. It was a bitch. Go figure. After a hard fought battle and some insane CC abilities from our young lightning sorcerer, the party was able to defeat the Wavering. Uh, with Siler, Lorivir dive into the pool to investigate 
this uh, this dragon. In doing so, Ankarak, or Ankarak, her bow glows, and it grows in power. It now deals bonus damage to undead. Pro the protector of elven kind lives up to its name. With the orb in hand, the party surfaces to make their way back to their horses and to Brenziri. In the distance, they see a figure slumped against a tree, and approaching cautiously, the figure appears to be Sir Edmund. Lorvir rushes over to him, finding that an arrow has pierced his armor, and black ooze drips from it. He's been poisoned. It's four days ride back to Brenziri, and with Tyleaf and Dodo not knowing the cause or the cure for this poison, they do not think that he'll make it. Though no one outside of High Elves themselves know where the High Elf city is located, Lorvir does know of outpost on the edges of the woods. She offers to go in and find one of these outposts in order to help Edmund. Psy stiffens at this idea, but wi with his party, they set off. They ride through the night and exhaustion sets in on Mokot and Dodo. Siler offers to stay with them, being able to track Lorivir and Tylee's progress if they were to go ahead. This happens. And when Mokot and Dodo are fit to travel again, they make their way tracking Lorevere and Tyleaf. The party reconvenes mid-afternoon. As they progress, Tyleaf notices a bird, a peculiar bird, whose right wing is made out of wood. Just then, the bird flies across their path and gracefully, almost in one fluid motion, turns into an elf whose right arm is made out of wood. From that arm she grows a scimitar and addresses the party. Who are you? Why are you here? The normal questions asked. She sees Edmund and buys our story. And as she leads the our party through the forest maze, it opens up into a druid enclave known as the Elder Grove. We are shown to some quarters and they take Edmund away. Our guide introduces herself as Caliph and she leads us into a giant tree in which a man stands. A elf to be exact, beside a giant bear. Tyleaf's wolf heads over to the bear and the two animals begin to play. The man is Archmage Uthrandir Greenhand, and he too has an arm made out of wood. He explains that we are welcome there, but we are not yet able to leave until it is guaranteed that we were not followed. With that, the party is dismissed. Now, the Elder Grove is filled with many different races. Rangers and Druids wander freely. Even tree ants walk around. Tyleaf even spots an orc. Skeptically, and with prompting from Caliph, he approaches the orc. He t finds out that the orc is a druid as well, and that he was never really accepted into his clan, favoring nature more than the raw violence that is known in orc kind. Mokot and Dodo, in their fashion, go shopping. Uh, finding what wares and items that they can purchase from the druids, while Lorevir sits patiently at Edmund's side. Caliph gives Tyleaf a tour of the Elder Grove. What is the reason behind the wooden arms? Tyleaf questions. It is the blessing of Gosar, she replies. She then leads him into a grove where there are druids encased in wood, each having a very peaceful and serene expression about them. 
This is the result of Gosar's blessing. With the power it will slowly grow, but in this way we never die, she says. You too can receive this from the Archmage, if you so desire. And without a second thought, Tyleaf agrees. Meanwhile, Siler stands at the edge of the lake, located in the center of the grove. He notices something in the water and, stripping himself of his weapons, dives in. After a frustrating search, there before him is the most beautiful elf he's ever seen. So much so that it's almost painful to look at her. He finds out it is a nymph, and she goes by the name of Eleneth. Having amused her, she grants him a token, a small shell. Which, by the way, plus four to will saves. Ridiculous. In one of the rooms, Edmund regains consciousness and speaks of an orc, a full orc, bigger than the rest. And it left him powerless to stop his men from being killed. Lorvir hear hears this before Edmund slides back into unconsciousness. Well guys, that's where I'm gonna stop it off for today. Stay tuned, find out what happens next. Anyway, that's it for episode four. Peace.